Nigerians know that the federal government is unhappy with Nam Dekano with a lot of things he has been saying, a lot of secrets that he has opened, a lot of things that he has got that even every other person, every other politician, every other Nigerian, for those who know, are aware of. But they have no God to even say it. But this man has God to say it. And that's one of the reasons why they so much hate him. And people are not surprised that with all these allegations, all the charges against him, it used to be five before now, but before the court date, which was yesterday, they added another two. And people are not surprised because they believe that one of the allegations or one of the reasons why they should be charging him the first thing that should be on the list first is why accusing that buhari is not buhari that is the jubri of sudan that is an impostor why is it that they didn't bring that in all of those charges if they could go as low as oh he called buhari an idiot he called buhari a pedophile he insulted buhari then why is it that they could not bring the charge charges against him that he called Buhari an impostor? Nigerians are surprised. Nigerians are really surprised at what exactly because that should have been the first charge on the list because they have seven now. Why didn't the government add that that he called Buhari an impostor? That the real Buhari is dead. Why didn't they add that? Why didn't they add that charge? Because it is true, and they have no defense against that. God is fighting Biafra's battles, and we will be victorious, plain and simple. These are reactions of people. People are wondering why. Because that should have been first on the list. That why should you be calling a whole president of a country that is an impostor, this and this and that. That is even the greatest embarrassment that one could have thought of. But they ignored it. They do ignore it. <laughs> well, I was expecting to see them charge Namde Kano with that also. Maybe Namde Kano knows their secrets and they, are, and they don't want to expose themselves. And you will begin to wonder why majority of the Northerners are so happy when it comes to Namde Kano's case. They take it more seriously than the Boko Haram the bandits and the Iswap that have been taking their lives on a daily basis, they prefer to even be paying taxes to those people. They love that. They are more comfortable with that than to see Namde Kano exposing their agenda, than to see Bua Namde Kano calling Buhari all manner of names. If they could go as low as saying that he insulted Buhari, then why didn't they bring that charges up that he said he did he said that that they have to prove beyond reasonable that even when everybody thought that they can only go to the uk to go and extradite nam de Kano, not knowing that they have been looking for ways looking for ways going after making sure that they want to go after him to bring him back to nigeria it is really painful but one thing some people are like okay they should jail him they should do this and that they should continue like joining the case to eternity the man has been able to open majority of the people who are really ready to, to know. He has opened a lot of things. He has opened a lot of people's eyes. A lot of people who do not who did not even believe in him. But the manner and way at which this government is going about this all day begin to give a lot of them reasons why they need to believe this man. Because people believe that what is good for the goose is also good for the ganders. Why? A lot of people are now aware of those things. So to me, it is too late. Whether you keep him there, whether you release him, the whole thing is out already. The tactics, the antics, the agenda is already is there. People can see it. It is only the wicked people, those who are wicked to themselves. Because if you are not wicked to yourself, you see that all of the things that the man has the boldness, has the guts, the audacity to say, all of those things are happening. And maybe the majority of the people who are still like living in denial, these politicians. Do you see the way and manner at which all these Igbo leaders, different groups now, monarchs, even some governors, are beginning to come out to say no? Nam de Kano, that they are, they are not going to rest on, until Nam de Kano is released. 
Did they have that guts before? Did they have that boldness before? Some of them are even waiting until they are given because of this selfishness. Until they are given Igbo presidency. And they are saying, especially Ohaneze, they are saying, oh, if Namde Kano, if the Igbo presidency is not going to happen, they have no choice than to join Biafra. But they know the truth. Why? The question you need to be asking, if those ones, if they are not even selfish, just as other regions who have had the taste of becoming the president, if they are not the same, begin to ask yourself, those who have the opportunity, those regions who have had the opportunity of becoming president, tell us what they have brought to the country. Tell us what their people are gaining. Nothing. To me, Igbe presidency is not just only to settle uh, scores. It's not just only to appease the Igbos. Is that how we are going to be living? People believe that in the same environment, anybody can be president. In as much you are meeting my daily needs, you are meeting my demand, you are doing what is expected of you as a government. Who cares? But because of the way and manner at which they are going about this whole thing, it has become an ethnic issue. Whether you are qualified or you are not qualified, just go there, just to fulfill all righteousness. It's very, very unfortunate. So we begin to see all the Igbo groups now coming out to defend Namdekano, Namdekano this, Namdekano that. They knew all of these things right from the beginning. And that was why I said Namdekano has been able to open a lot of them eyes because he has the guts to say it. Don't be surprised that some of the things, most of the things Namdekano has been saying, they are aware of it, but they have no guts to say it because of selfishness because of greed but ask yourself the, the a pertinent questioner where are all of those things led them nowhere do you know how many people have been taken down in southeast just because they want to get at them and one bad news for the government is that the more you you are doing what you are doing so that they will be discouraged the more they are emboldened the more they are strengthened you can't take that away. So people are now surprised because one of the embarrassments that this government has gotten is this issue of an impostor. And yet, it's not part of the charges against Namde Kano. And people are asking, why? Why? Everybody believes that, oh my God, <laughs> they are going to nail this guy. Oh, yeah, come and tell us how it happened. Oh, you said oh, he's been buried in... Saudi Arabia, oh, they will tell you it's in a, in a shallow ground, this and this and this and that. Oh, it was brought from whatever, irrespective of whatever. But what the most important thing is that he's an impostor. Why is it that he's not part of the charges? Those are the questions that people are asking. Maybe if you know the answer, let us know in the comment section. Why is it that the federal government didn't charge Namde Kano for calling Buhari an impostor? Leave your comments down there below and let's have your take. Thank you.